Enter the Gungeon is a game where nearly everything is either equipped with a gun or is just a gun itself. The items, the enemies, the enemies' weapons, the doors, you get the point. So naturally, I ask the question, is it possible to beat the game without using guns? So here was the plan. I beat the game using only weapons that exist in the real world that are not considered by people to be guns. So a photon laser, for example, while not technically a gun, is still gun-shaped and doesn't exist in the real world. However, a crossbow or a sword is a different type of weapon, and thus I was allowed to use them. But of course, what's a typical YouTuber gaming challenge without some stakes? So here's my idea. If I beat Gungeon without wielding a single gun the entire playthrough, my Twitch chat all has to buy me a box of Sour Patch Kids, because they're my favorite candy. And my YouTube audience, that's you by the way, has to subscribe and simply click on my Patreon link. You don't even gotta subscribe to it, just, just, just look at it, acknowledge it, appreciate it. In return, I bet my chat that if I failed to beat the challenge within 3 hours, I would have to play Five Nights at Freddy's on my stream. I am a huge scaredy cat, and even the thought of jump scares sends a chill down my spine, so I felt this would be a fair thing to wager. This is a different type of content that I'm used to, so if you enjoy, please let me know in the comments. Alright, on to the challenge. Today, we are doing Enter the Gungeon, but I cannot use guns. And you might be thinking, well, how are you going to beat the game without guns? Like, how are, you how are you going to play the game if you cannot shoot a weapon? Well, here is what I'm thinking. At the very least, we can start with the bullet. The bullet does not have a gun. The bullet uses a sword. Now, the thing about the bullet that I'm, I'm worried about is if we take damage... We lose a lot of firepower. Um, it'll be way more difficult. Because we can't just switch weapons. We have to keep using the sword. And half of the sword's power comes from not having taken damage. So if we take any damage, we're kind of... Kind of in a grody spot. I feel like items are going to make the difference. Ex yeah, I'm thinking the exact thing. The, the exact same thing. Uh, what we really want is we don't want weapons. I can I can beat the final boss using the sword. I'm I'm confident in that. What I'd like though is for us to grab some passive items that are going to really help me out here. If I can get some good passive items, that would be would be great. That is a gun. I can't use that. Once I had arrived at the boss, I had pressed my enter key to skip the boss cutscene. However, what I didn't realize was that my timer was linked to the enter key, which is why the timer suddenly stops during this fight. Regardless, the run was going pretty well. I'm keeping it safe over here. I don't want to lose my, uh, my health. There we go. <laughs> Three, oh, did I press enter already? Okay, well, we started at 2.15, so. <laughs> God damn it. These early chambers are super easy for me. I can just talk to chat, really. I'll be fine. You don't want to talk about chat? Chat, I want to go to DreamHack Atlanta this year. I live in Florida, so, you know, it's not that far away. I want to meet people, too. I don't know. Do, like, do content creators go to DreamHack? Is that a thing that people do? Like, they do, like, TwitchCon or whatever? Because I feel like DreamHack isn't really for, like, streamers. It's more for... It's more for gamers, isn't it? I do want to... I do want to meet some some new content creators though i have like a bucket list of people i want to meet you know what, you know what i want to do i want to tell the story i have a really good story for when i met connor eats pants he used to do minecraft content now he's a variety streamer he's kind of in like every every group on twitch you know but yeah so i met i met connor eats pants um at creator clash Creator Clash was this year, but it was at, um, whenever it was, it was in, it was in Tampa, right? And I was living in Orlando at the time. So I was like, oh, I'll just drive there for the day. You know, like it's not even, it's a, it's a, it's a, like a four hour round trip. Yeah. Let's just go to Tampa. When I bought the ticket, I was like, okay, yeah, I, I've heard people like hyping this event up for a while. I know there's going to be some famous streamers here. 
people who aren't like participating in the event who are just gonna be here to watch so i'm like yeah i gotta be there like these these are people who i'm i'm not just like oh my god i'm like a big fan like these are people i want to talk to these people who i want to meet you know i don't want just a cheap picture and then walk away damn it i wasn't paying attention <laughs> Um, but I, I didn't meet anyone. I didn't meet anyone anywhere, but I get there, you know, I get there, I get my, I get to my seat and I'm like, hmm, okay, it's an all right seat, not the best. Couldn't really make out anyone's face if they were like down in the boxing ring, but I was able to see pretty well. I was able to see the fight. I sit down. I'm like, damn, it really just isn't gonna, it really just isn't gonna happen tonight, huh? I noticed my phone's at like. 15% I'm like damn that also sucks like I my phone might die before the event ends like the events just started my phone's at 15% that sucks because I had kept checking it all throughout the day I was like I gotta check Twitter I gotta check Twitter I gotta see what's going on I gotta see what people are doing let me try hard real quick and then I'll continue the story little side note another reason that taking damage sucks when you're using blasphemy is your primary weapon not only does it reduce the amount of damage you're dealing in half but it also means that you can only do up close hits you cannot strike a blow that is ranged anymore which is what i was relying on in the first chamber why did my timer stop again what button am i pressing that's doing that i'm just i'm pressing all do you know what it might be Every time I go into a, every time I go into a um, a boss fight, I use my active, and I press I press space. That might be it. Don't tell me I die. Not on chamber three. Not when I'm this close. Let's just, let's just do something really, really crude here. Run two began 18 minutes into the challenge, which is only 10% of the time I gave to myself, but I began to worry about my strategy for the challenge. I worried that blasphemy alone would not be able to carry this challenge, but for the moment, I was steadfast in my plan. If I could find some powerful passive items to complement my sword, then I would surely be able to overcome the later chambers of the gungeon. All I needed was one solid passive item. Okay, but let me continue my story. Let me continue my story. I got sidetracked. So I'm, I'm walking around the venue. Nothing happens. I sit down on my seat and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of upset. I'm kind of bummed. I'm like, hey. You know, the fight's gonna be good and all, but I was really hoping to meet someone before the fight, and you know, it just doesn't seem like it's happening. So I sit down and I look down at the, uh, at the area near the ring, and I notice there are a lot of folding chairs around the ring, and I realize, I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's where everyone is. Because they don't, they obviously don't want to be swarmed by buffoons like me, they're all sitting in the VIP area down by the ring and a regular Joe Schmo like me isn't going to get in there. But I'm watching the fight. I'm enjoying it. I'm having a good time. I keep checking Twitter every once in a while just to like see what's going on. My battery's slowly depleting, but it doesn't really matter because the fight's good. You know, I'm really I'm really into the fight. The the last fight ends with Idubs and uh, and the Dr. Mike dude. And I'm like, "All right. All right. This was great. This was a good time." I gotta head out before the traffic starts hitting. I look at my phone, 2%. I'm like, perfect timing. Like, I gotta go. But then I look down. Guess who I see? You guessed it. Conrad's pants is down there. And he's chatting with his viewers. Fuck. He's chatting. He's like just chatting with people. You know? Like, he's, he's in the VIP area. But he's kind of like at a fence. So, he... Pausing the story once again. I'll count it. I'll count a crossbow. We'll use a crossbow. But yeah, I see... I see Conrad's pants. And he's just like talking to people. And I'm thinking to myself, this is the best case scenario possible. 
So I go down there and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, my, my heart's racing. My legs are shaking. I'm like, holy shit, this is it. This is it. I get to meet someone. I, I get to like talk to someone who I, I've, I've wanted to meet for a while. And I look at my phone. And my phone is at 1%. And so not only am I filled with adrenaline about to meet this content creator that I've really wanted to meet for a while, not only am I trying to beat the rush of people trying to get out of the venue before traffic starts getting really complicated, not only that, but my phone is at 1%. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, I kind of want a picture. And if I want a picture, I got to be quick. So I rush down there. I rush down there. He's walking away from the area. Like, there's nobody left that he's talking to. And I yell out. I'm like, Connor! Connor! And he turns around. And I, I wave at him. He comes over. He's like, hey, what's up? I'm like, hey, can I take a picture with you? And he's like, yeah, for sure, man. So I take a picture with him. And I'm like, all right, thanks, man. I got... Uh, you know, and I, I, I don't even, like, say goodbye. I'm like, thank you. And I, I like, dash off. Because I'm like, I got to charge my phone right now or else it's going to die. I got to I gotta get out of here or else I'm never going to make it home tonight. Because keep it, I don't, have a ho I don't have a hotel, right? But I'm like, I'm like, thank you. And I just run off. And then I think about it in my car as I'm driving off. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking, Damn. That was probably one of the cringiest ever interactions a streamer could have with one of their viewers. It's just a guy coming up, legs shaking, nervous as hell. He goes, oh, c c can I have a picture? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, man. Here we go. Let's take a picture. Oh, thank you. Runs off. I don't know. I could sleep in my car. I could sleep in my car in a parking lot with my PC. I don't need a hotel. Oh, it's, 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 it wasn't a gun. I thought it was going to be a gun, but we have a, we have an S tier passive. Holy sh**. I'm worried right now. Because Blasphemy is my, is my ace. Blasphemy is my, my go-to. And it's because it's such a good weapon. That being said, with only one heart left, I'm kind of scared. I think that's, oh, sh**. Behind a thing, that's not fair. Oh, God, what time is it? It's 2.55. We're almost done with the first hour. I, don't, I really don't want to play FNAF. I'm scared. I'm scared. Even though I had found an S-tier passive item, I still ended up dying to the third chamber boss. Perhaps if I had gotten it before I lost Blasphemy's magic sword projectile, things would have been different, though I'm still confident it wouldn't have made a difference. What I really needed was some more offensive assistance. If I could upgrade Blasphemy itself, I wouldn't have to worry about taking damage at all. But you know what they say, third time's the charm. You know what I think is scariest about FNAF? I hate their eyes. If their eyes weren't like that, I would be fine. Like, I don't think FNAF, I don't think FNAF 4 is scary. Because their eyes are just like black voids. I don't think that's scary. I think it's scary when their eyes look like a... Like, like human. Like, their bodies are like, kind of like goofy and stuff. But their eyes are so human. That scares me. That creeps me out. That's a passive. We'll take that. Uh, I think there was a chest in here, maybe? Or no, it's up here. Okay. That is also a passive. Okay. Ooh, ooh, this is gonna be good. This is exactly what you love to see. But if we take damage... Oh my god, it's gonna be so bad if we take damage. I'm scared of taking damage. Something I've noticed is that my fire rate has gone down a little bit. And I think it's just because the silver bullets make my projectiles slower. They clearly do more damage. They're slower. <laughs> a bow? Okay. A bow is definitely not a gun. 
However, the bow is such a garbage weapon in this game. I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take the armor of thorns as well. But this is such a bad weapon. This is all we got to work with. Also, I feel like I'm, I'm playing pretty good right now. And I think it's because of those two passives I got early on in my game. I also haven't used the bow at all. But I have it. If I have to resort to the bow, I'm pretty much done already. But at least it's like... It's like, it's like the, it's like the Pokemon move struggle. It's like, if you have to use struggle, you're probably, you're probably like done. Like you're probably not going to win the Pokemon battle if you're using struggle. Zombie bolts could be useful. Ooh, wax wings could be useful. I'll grab that. We'll get both of these. Oh, we can't afford both of these. Okay. Well, I prefer wax wings anyways. A while back, I invited my friends over for a poker night, and I proposed the day of- Oh, sh- Okay, whatever. I proposed the day of the poker night. I was like, hey, what if we mix it up? What if we put in a whole $20? What if we put in a whole $20? And all the guys were like, what? $20? That's so much money. Let's just gamble $1. And I was like- like pussy shit if, if we're gonna gamble like we could just do something else tonight we don't have to we don't have to gamble tonight we can <laughs> like we can play go fish if you guys want like we don't have to play poker but i mentioned this to my friend i'm like dude i just i just want to gamble 20 dollars, and you're telling me i'm gambling my life savings away and he's like dude i've got to like i've got to like build up to it you know like i can't just go in and start immediately throwing in like a bunch of money like i gotta acclimate to it it's like what the f does that mean you gotta acclimate to it monka w only two hours left oh no what are we gonna do i need to get some heals desperately if i don't get if i don't get back to full health i'm gonna have to keep using the bow and the bow is running out of ammo and i'm kind of scared I'm really, I'm desperately trying not to take damage right now because I want to, I'm hoping that after I beat this mini boss, he drops at least half a heart. He drops at least half a heart. And if he does that, I'm, I'm good. I get blasphemy back and I don't have to use the bow, which mind you is running out of ammo. I did get an ammo refill just a moment ago, but now that I'm using a bunch of ammo on a mini boss, I'm a little bit worried that I might not have enough spare for the chamber four boss. There we go. Nice. All right, man. Let's let's fight the boss. This boss is really easy to fight when you have blasphemy because I can just chill. All I got to do is swipe up. And look how much damage I'm doing. Now, if you're wondering. The challenge in this challenge that I'm most challenged by is the dragon. I'm deathly afraid of the dragon because the dragon is going to be it's going to be difficult for a number of reasons. Not only because it's the final boss, but also because it has a lot of health and I'm not confident I can beat it with blasphemy. Oh my god. I have the hiccup. I have the hiccups again. I, I I have not had the hiccups since my last stream where I was playing Dead Cells for 46, uh, or not 46, 76 hours straight. I have no idea why this happens to me. I can't take any more damage because if I do, I'm not going to have enough health for the boss fight and I need health. Oh my god, he's shooting fast. And I don't have the time to dodge, oh god. Low on ammo, which I'm worried about, but I think I'll be alright. <gasps> Bug. Scatter shot would be nice, but we don't have enough ammo. After a little more time spent exploring the fifth chamber, it was finally time to fight the final boss. All that stood between me and victory was one gun-shaped dragon. 
Thanks to the two passive bullet upgrades I had gotten early on, I was confident Blasphemy would be able to beat the Drygun alone, but if I took even a single damage before the final phase of the fight, I would be done for. By the way, ignore the conversation I'm having with chat before the boss fight. It's, it's not relevant. Latex is the soft white substance found beneath the bark of a mature rubber tree. You may be surprised to think of latex as a natural material, given the strength and man-made feel of so many of its final applications, like tires, rubber gloves, and tennis shoes. Huh. I thought latex was like a more processed version of of rubber. All right, I gotta try hard. I gotta try hard. We can't. We can't keep talking about latex while I'm gamering. This might look easy. This might look like I'm guaranteed to win. But consider. If I'm to lose the power of Blasphemy by taking even one damage, this will significantly, significantly decrease my ability to actually deal damage to the boss. <sighs> nah, I'm, I'm capping. I'm, 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 I got this. I got this. This is easy money. This is easy money. You kidding me? No damage drag on? Oh, f this has to be it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Oh! And that is how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. Whoo wee. Maybe we need to raise the stakes. Maybe next time we gotta go through bullet hell or something. I don't know. That was ridiculously easy, though. Alright, nice.